Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I just got off the uh, the Zoom with uh, a client. I was doing a, a coaching session, and she is not a union member. She's non-union. She's uh, out in the Midwest, and uh, something came up during the coaching session that I thought was um, interesting, and I wanted to share with you because I think it might be something that if you're not union, uh, you might be thinking as well. We were talking about a challenge that she has that a lot of people uh, that I coach and teach have had over the years. In fact, so much so that when I took a survey a few years ago as to what classes people wanted me to add to the curriculum, the uh, overwhelming number one was uh, a class on social media, but the overwhelming number two was a class on pricing. And in the pricing class, we go very carefully through all of the pricing, all of the rates that the union sets, and also the rates that a number of organizations that share um, information with each other and kind of come up with non-union rates suggest. But I've always wondered, and it came up during this coaching session, why, whether you're union or not, what it matters. I mean, why not use union rates as a starting point? So here's what I want to share with you today. Uh, sag After makes it really easy for you to go find out what the rates are on uh, on certain things. Um, you can go to their website, sagafter.org, and you can look up the rates for various contracts, for the things that you might be doing. And instead of thinking to yourself immediately, oh, I'm non-union, so I really shouldn't be charging nearly as much as what union people charge, um, why not? Are you non-union by choice? Are you non-union because of where you are in your journey? Uh, are you non-union because you were you work in a, in a right-to-work state? Or are you non-union because you've never been given the opportunity to join the union? Who knows? I doubt it's because you're anti-performance union. I don't know of anybody... Who's, who's actually like that. They all want to make more money and have more safety and, and better working conditions and hopefully residuals and, and so on. So whatever it is, whatever makes you where you are, here's what I'd like you to do. Don't immediately assume that because you're doing non-union work, you're worth less money or you should be charging less. Now, you can think to yourself, well, the client will expect that. If I'm non-union, they'll expect there to be a lower rate. That's not necessarily true. One of the biggest arguments that we've been having as a union over the years is the fact that because some production companies don't want the union as part of their, uh, their production plans, they will offer even higher rates as a one-time payout. So a buyout is what it's called. They'll offer $10,000 for a commercial one time. Whereas if you do a union shoot, you pay somebody $2,000, $3,000, and then they make residuals as that commercial is shown. That could end up making somebody hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have one particular client who was in a Geico commercial, and she's made a good ton of money, like six figures from that spot because it's run for so many years. So that's why they want to do it. But the actual session fee for doing a television commercial isn't but a couple of thousand dollars. They'll give you $10,000 if you just take it once. So my point is pricing isn't automatically higher. You don't want to price your work automatically higher if you're in the union, nor do you want to price it automatically lower if you're not in the union. And it also gives you a great starting point when you're talking to a client that doesn't really care and wouldn't know if you're union or non-union. They're not doing the contract union, so they don't know. Um, So one thing that you can do is go familiarize yourself with all of the rates that are available. You can either take our pricing class or you can go to sagafter.org and you can look them up individually. We do list non-union rates, but what we're doing is we're listing what sort of the hive mind of GVAA and WOVO and some of the other organizations that do this sort of work have come up with that people are comfortable charging. I'm not necessarily sure that that's a great way to come to that decision, like take the average of what everybody thinks. Why not start with union rates, right? Those are hard-fought negotiated rates, 
And in some cases, you should be charging more than union rates if you're non-union for a one-time payout, a one-time buyout. How do you charge? How do you feel about charging? Do you always feel like, well, if I give them a break on the price, maybe they'll hire me for more stuff? That'll be another video that I'll do someday to disabuse you of that notion. Um, but what do you do? Does it make you nervous to think about pricing? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to love to get your take on this because it's something that makes a lot of people really, really anxious about how to do things because you get to a point where you get booked on something and then you don't want to lose that booking because you've asked for a crazy price. Well, union rates are not crazy rates. They're the floor that union people get. So it's a great place to start. That's my advice to you. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. If you'd like to join my mailing list, there's a subscribe form at the bottom of this page. Go for that. I'd love to let you know not only when these videos come out, but also about the really cool stuff that we have to offer on uh, the website to make you and your practice spectacular. And if you'd like to see the very latest video that I've done, maybe you're watching these videos out of order, the ones that I'm doing every day for a year this year, uh, just go ahead, click on that frame, and YouTube will play it for you. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow.